start the morning session for this workshop. Um, let me introduce our speaker a little bit first. Um, Professor Xi from Harvard University. Um, I've known him for, for 10 years, I think, when I visited Harvard. Um, and his advisor was uh, Andy Strominger. I remember I was talking to Andy about his students' progress in research. So he commented on each of the students, how they are doing on each topic, etc., without mentioning she at all. So in the end, I asked him, what about she? And he said, oh, he's flying. <laughs> so um, she has been making progress too fast to keep track of even for Andy. <laughs> And that's kind of the kind of impression I have about him. Um, so after his PhD, he stayed at Harvard University as junior fellow, and then get promoted to professor at Harvard. Personally, I think it would be much more interesting to work as a postdoc around the world for 10 years. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I guess Harvard cannot um, let him do that. So we're very happy to have him here. and. Uh, talk about his most recent uh, research works from 2D superconformal field theory to 6D gauge theory. Let's welcome Xi. Thank you very much for that introduction, and uh, thank you for uh, inviting me to this very nice workshop. I've been really enjoying it so far. It's also my first time to Taiwan. Um, and I should especially thank the organizers for giving me the luxury to speak for three hours which actually will allow me to say something you know, trivial rather than as opposed to rushing through the material of things. I just want to do a regular seminar on this. Um, so um, this talk is going, going to be based on, uh, well, the result is just in one paper uh, from four months ago. Um, with my, I wrote with my students, uh, former student Ximing Chang, who is now a postdoc at Berkeley, Shu uh, Hang Shao, and Ying uh, Chen Lin. Lin Xiao and Yifan Wang. Um, um, the, the paper is called Little String Amplitudes. Um, the, um, uh, it's one of, probably one of the most technical papers I've written, but uh, for, for, for a good reason. Uh, in fact, the, the experience of doing this project is much like uh, cooking a meal in a very fancy restaurant where you have to buy many expensive ingredients. So we're the cook, and the, the people that made the ingredients for us uh, were, there's a long list of people, um, Jimmy Young, uh, Kutasov, uh, Cyberg, and also Ahorani, uh, Jill, Sahakian, um, this sort of work from about a decade ago, um, and we were able to make some progress thanks to some progress uh, about uh, 10 years ago in on the conformal field theory side, um, you know, like, ideas like Revolt and Teschner, um, uh, Teschner, uh, and um, also work of some Lachikovs, Lachikov, sorry. And, uh, uh, and last but not least, also uh, work in a completely different area, and uh, papers of uh, Byrne, uh, Carrasco, Dixon, Johansson here, uh, well, and also uh, Koskor. Um, um, and uh, um, the goal, uh, well, uh, in any case, so, um, um, so it's gonna, it's gonna get, collect these uh, expensive ingredients and cooking will take some time. And uh, so as you might experience in a fancy restaurant, I sit for a long time waiting for a meal. Um, and when the meal is served, hopefully it will be tasty, but you will still, might still leave the restaurant hungry. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, hunger for, for more, <laughs> hopefully. So um, um, our goal is to understand um, uh, our primary goal is to understand six-dimensional gauge theories. Uh, well, not just gauge theories, but um, you know, as, as you know, in six dimension, there's this very famous two comma zero theory, um, six D quantum field theories. Um, uh, uh, we're gonna be working in the world of uh, 
16 supersymmetries. Um, and in this case, there are two famous theories, the 2 comma 0 theory and the 1 comma 1 theory. Now, the 1 comma 1 theory is just the maximally supersymmetric of Yamil's theory, which is now the renormalizable in six dimensions. Usually, you think of this as uh, either a trivial can be free, or an you know, IR, uh, or not a complete quantum field theory, uh, which is basically true. Um, uh, and on the other hand, there's the 2 comma 0 super component theory, which is uh, not to understand exactly what that theory is, is uh, one of the major problems in string theory. Um, now, uh, people have mostly focused on the 2 comma 0 theory in recent years, and our tool to understand this theory, uh, there, there's indirect approaches. You can try to compact by this theory to lower dimensions and understand the lower dimensional theory. Uh, you can directly do to constrain the theory using symmetry, and more, most recently um, by the work of by Rastelli um, et al. through a conformal bootstrap directing six dimensions. Um, or you can try to study using holography. Now, it's well known that the 2 comma 0 theory is uh, holographically dual to M theory on 87 times S4, which um, we don't you know, know that much about beyond the perturbative gravity sector. Um, so, uh, it's hard to say anything beyond, um, say, DTS protected quantity. Um, now, um, there is a, another approach to the 2 comma 0 theory, and also actually to the 1 comma 1 theory in some sense, uh, in the sense I would explain, um, that um, uh, involves some kind of holography, but it's a little different from the standard ADS CFT dictionary. This is called little string theory, um, which I'll explain. And uh, um, uh, by the way, uh, you know, in these days, we go to a string theory conference, you often hear the complaints that the talks, not really on string theory, but on um, quantum field theory and other things. I promise you that this will be a good old on the string theory talk, we'll actually do a worksheet string computation. <coughs> um, okay, so let's, uh, uh, let me uh, give you the outline of uh, this talk. Um, so first I'll give you an uh, overview of little string theory, uh, this too small thing, little uh, string theory. Um, and then I will describe, I'll spend a lot of time actually developing uh, or recalling the techniques uh, in component 2D component field theory. Uh, these techniques uh, may not be completely familiar with, to everybody uh, because uh, they largely have to do with irrational component field theories, which is not usually treated in detail in textbooks, um, but are, they are extremely important. Uh, so we'll discuss the cigar CFT in some detail and uh, um, also related uh, to the Liebel theory, Liebel CFT. Um, and finally, we'll discuss um, double scale little string theory, right? DSLST for short, stands for double scale little string theory. Um, and we'll study uh, scattering amplitudes in this theory uh, from the worksheet approach, and we'll compare it to amplitudes in six dimensional, maximally super symmetric, one comma one, uh, super Yamil's amplitudes. Now, uh, you may already wonder uh, um, here, um, you know, the 60 Yamil's theory is, is not a uh, complete theory, it diverges to some loop order that I'll describe later. Uh, so, what am I talking about? Um, all of that will be, will be explained in, um, in detail uh, in later, probably not today actually, because today I'll mostly spend my time uh, revealing uh, what was known about the string theory and uh, the CFT setup. Of, uh, but our goal is going to be, able, is going to, be uh, to try to set, learn something about the UV completion of these six dimensional quantum field theories um, using a uh, worksheet technique uh, through a duality that is uh, to some extent understood, uh, but many technical details remain to, uh, to be worked out. Um, okay, so let me start with um, little string theory, um, as opposed to the double scale little string theory. Uh, this is a subject that has been uh, received a lot of attention about a decade ago, but uh, not so much recently. Um, LST stands for little string theory. So, so what is this? What is this? Uh, we started with type two 
string theory, uh, either to A or to B. Um, we consider NS5 range. Let's say a stack of K NS5 range on top of each other. Um, and so there's some showing a couple of degrees of freedom living on the NS5 range. If you're working in type 2B, and you may want to SDLize this to E5 range, but I would warn you that that would not be the appropriate way to think about this theory because uh, I'm going to be taking a limit um, to consider the limit, consider the limit where I send the bulk string coupling to zero. Um, so uh, this kind of limit, uh, this is a little different from the usual decoupling limit we consider in getting ADSCFU, where you keep the string coupling to be what it is, but take the low energy limit in which you get a decouple theory on the frame. Here, we are not going to take low energy limit. We're going to take the energy scale to be of order one, well, generally of order one compared to string scale. So um, alpha prime e squared, finite, but we're going to send the bulk string coupling to zero. If you do that in the presence of a D brain, the world volume theory of D brain becomes free. But that's not the case for NS5 brain. The NS5 brain world volume theory will remain strongly coupled. And there's some degrees of freedom on the NS5 brain that decouples from the bulk and remains strongly coupled. Um, when this thing was first proposed by Cyberg um, back in 2001 or something, um, uh, it was um, maybe before that, actually, a couple years before that. Uh, um, it, it was thought that this world volume theory is uh, some six-dimensional strongly uh, coupled string theory. Um, as, I, as I'll explain, uh, it's uh, not really true that the theory is six-dimensional. Uh, there's some degrees of freedom of the theory that lives in sixth dimension, but it's not, but not all degrees of freedom of this theory live in sixth dimension. You'll understand exactly why. Um, you mean others live in the full ten dimension? Yes. Um, so, um, uh, the first, to, to get some idea of what this theory is, let's consider uh, the supergravity description of the NS5 brains. So, if you have uh, K NS5, the supergravity solution uh, with the uh, K NS5 brain charge. Um, here I'll write the solution in string frame. This will be important because in this background, the string coupling will be varying as a distinguished string frame from Einstein frame. Um, so, um, uh, well, the, the general solution that carry in this NS5 brain charge uh, with the right symmetry will look like this, let's say with some standard uh, work factor on over some Horizon radius R0 over R squared, dp squared, plus uh, 1 plus some charge for the alpha prime here, for dimension region over R squared, um, and dr squared over 1 minus R squared over R squared plus R squared d omega 3 squared, and then plus uh, dy5 squared, with the y5 stands for uh, transverse R5, spatial R5 is just flat. Uh, this is a uh, general non extremal NS5 brain solution. Um, now, the first thing we do is to consider the extremal limit, where it simplifies a lot. In the extremal limit, you send the horizon, well, you send this R0 to 0, um, and this just becomes 1. And uh, so the extremal and, uh, becomes 7. Um, so, um, uh, that looks extremely simple. Um, um, and then, um, oh, uh, I forgot to write down, the philatine in the background, which is varying, e to the to phi, uh, is the asymptotic string coupling squared times 1 plus k alpha prime over r squared. Um, so asymptotic string coupling is gs, and string coupling becomes strong as r goes to zero. Uh, and there's also h flux, uh, which uh, I won't write here, but basically you have this NS5 brain with the transverse, the surrounding S3, uh, and uh, the integral of the h field, the field transfer the b field around on the S3 is equal to K. Uh, 
Um, now, in a decoupling limit, um, if you send string coupling to zero, um, you see, uh, if you send a bulk string coupling to zero, asymptotic string coupling to zero, um, as you send, if you look at the region very close to the brain where R is very small, then the string, string coupling is still uh, can get large. In fact, uh, the string coupling will still go to infinity as R goes to zero. So um, that suggests that there's some strongly interacting degrees of freedom uh, on the brain. Even if you send the um, bulk coupling to zero. So the coupling limit here, of course, is sending the bulk string coupling to zero and send to R, send R to zero, but keep G string over R, uh, well, uh, this thing will, will be finite. Um, so if you look at the near horizon, geometry, also the background fields of this, uh, in this limit, uh, well, you just throw away the one. Um, and then, uh, as you can see, you get something very simple. Um, you get um, d s squared equal to minus d t squared plus d y five squared uh, plus um, k alpha prime, which is some kind of radius, we call some radius squared, um, d r over r squared plus d omega three, three squared. And then, as already mentioned, there's going to be still the h plus on s three with k units. Um, and then phi is very, so uh, I can write phi to be um, uh, written as phi zero minus log of r. Uh, if I call, uh, I can write this as phi zero minus rho, where rho is log of r, so this is just d rho squared plus d omega three squared. Um, and uh, as you see, this geometry is now very simple. The near horizon geometry is just r uh, 1 comma 5 times a linear dilaton. Uh, so we have this row direction where the dilaton is very linearly, linear dilaton. Um, then times a S3 uh, with k units of H flux on S3. So the wall sheet theory would be expected to be described by SU2 WZW model at level k. So um, that, as I explained later, will be exact solution to string theory, um, part of this string theory. Um, and that's the, um, uh, that will be the kind of string theoretic distribution of the degree of freedom on this k in this fiber. Um, Region and near the brain, there's some throat that, that, that develops. And uh, near the throat, this, the transverse S3 is of uh, um, constant size as there. And, and then there's the, the, the radial direction turns to a linear dilaton direction. So this, I guess I could call this um, dimension rho would be uh, rho. Other way. Doesn't matter. Um, uh, now, um, you can do this in either type 2 or type 2 string theory. So, um, uh, uh, whatever that's the theory that's described by string theory in this background is a little string theory. Um, uh, now, you can consider either 2A or 2B. Um, um, you might think that these are the Bulk description or the, the string to write description is pretty, pretty, much, pretty much the same. It's described by the same kind of uh, purely NS NS background in type two or type three string theory, but um, they have uh, uh, this little string theory um, in the type two A or type two B setup have completely different 
uh, low energy behavior. Um, in type 2 theory, in low energy, this is going to become uh, uh, the same as theory uh, on uh, n-fly frames, um, um, which will be the 2 comma 0, a k minus 1 uh, super conformal theory in six dimension. Um, whereas in type 2b, so this is in a low energy limit, in type 2b, the low energy degree of freedom um, uh, will be described by the 1 comma 1, uh, also a k minus 1, super yang mills theory. In this case, a k minus 1, this is just the gauge group as uk. Super yang mills theory. Uh, this theory is IR free. Um, uh, now, uh, uh, that you can uh, reason just by counting the number of supersymmetries and uh, well, combining with you know, looking at the, the moduli space of uh, vacua by separating the brains. Uh, but if you look at this description and ask um, where would you see the, uh, the massless gluons in IR free Yamil theory, there's no, there are nowhere to be found. Um, so that's a bit confusing, but if you think about it, you know, the, the reason for that is because these massive gluons are supposed to be living in this deep IR here, uh, which is completely strongly coupled from the string theory point of view. So it's not surprising that you cannot really say anything about it from this description. Um, oh. Oh, well, that you might think it would be an obstacle to understanding this description because this, in some sense this um, string theory in this background is strongly coupled because uh, uh, whatever you choose the, you know, the string coupling is at one point in the space, uh, as you move in the linear gear in that direction, your, the string coupling will grow in one direction uh, and it will grow infinitely. Um, so here, if you study the interaction of strings in some region where the coupling is weak, you can do that. Uh, and that will capture some of the physics of um, this uh, one comma one real string theory, whatever that is. Or, also in the two comma zero case. Um, but um, that would be, uh, that corresponds to the physics in the UV of this theory, uh, which is uh, quite disconnected from this IR description. Um, and uh, so if you want to <laughs> learn something about the IR limit of that theory, you have to uh, uh, modify this somewhat. Um, but before, uh, if, 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 if you make this thing non-extremal, and uh, uh, you make the temperature comparable to the yang mills coupling of the 5D theory. Uh, where, where does the horizon appear where, where the string coupling is 1? The, uh, well, that would depend on the temperature. Uh, so suppose the temperature was so that the um, yang mills theory was just had coupling 1, so that the temperature was equal uh, the to the same theory. order as the square size by yang mills coupling, yes. yes. Okay, then, then at that, that value of the horizon would the string coupling be 1? Uh, that's probably going to be the case. So it's, it's got the usual complement, yes. Yeah, yeah. One description or the other is that's, that's right. Um, so uh, before describing the, the way how we will modify the setup to avoid the strong coupling issue, um, let me describe uh, a different perspective on uh, the same theory, the narrow string theory. Um, so um, the NS5 brain. In S5 brain, uh, in super is described by a background with H blocks. Um, sometimes, if you perform in a situation where you have some circle, you, you perform key you can turn the H blocks into something that's pure geometry. Um, so, uh, you can do that with an S5 brain if you compactify. So, let's consider so, um, a different perspective. Um, so again, consider type two <coughs> string theory on um, uh, six dimensional Minkowski space times um, the remaining space I'll separate into a circle, another R3. Uh, so I'm gonna consider K and S5 brains wrap on a circle, uh, wrap wrapping the R, not wrapping circle, extending R1 comma five and uh, set the point uh, on the circle, but kind of spread out. Um, 
So I'm going to, uh, for now, uh, consider the supervised solution where the S5 rays are smeared on the circle. Um, uh, well, actually, uh, I don't have to. I can consider the one, the, the, the case where the NS5 brains are localized at a binary point on the circle. Um, in any case, um, uh, if you, um, uh, it's easy to write down the solutions, uh, the supervised solutions that correspond to NS5 brain. Before, we had the NS5 brains all at the same point in the transverse R4, but if you separate them in R4, uh, the extremal solution is easy to write down. You just uh, change these, uh, um, the function. Uh, before we had, um, so I'm writing the, the transverse uh, four direction. So before we have uh, some uh, one plus some k over r squared, uh, the d r squared plus r squared d omega squared. Uh, now if you have you know, brains that are separated, um, you can just write a minor function like some i from 1 to k, say uh, x minus xi, the same squared, d x for uh, well, this, this, dx squared, this, this is the, this the Euclidean metric on the transverse R4. Um, so um, now if you um, you can do this in flat space. You can also, in Euclidean R4, you can also compactify one direction. Um, if you smear um, on the circle, um, you just average over this, and um, uh, it's uh, easy to obtain the result, which is just 1 plus k over um, x. Uh, uh, now this x distance of the value is the uh, distance of uh, some coordinate in the R3. Uh, let me write the x squared. This is now the, the Euclidean line elements on R3. And then there's the theta squared with theta times the angle on S1. Um, so uh, if you now so we have a very simple solution like this, to idealize the S1, um, the uh, H-flux uh, through the S3 that surrounds the NS5 brain um, uh, would uh, now turn into, uh, turn into pure geometry, turn into pure, uh, we described by a non-trivial fibration of the dual, T-dualized circle fibers over this R3 uh, in the form of the uh, K-centered Hopf nut space. Um, so in this case, you get say, k center Hopf nut space, also known as you know, less than locally, uh, uh, locally flat space, LF space, um, where uh, you can well, you can you can write the you can, you can figure out what the metric is based on this uh, description. Just using a standard rule of uh, t duality on the uh, gravity geometry. Um, I, I won't bother writing on a metric. It looks like this. Um, uh, so there's going to be some circle, and so I'm doing this direction stand for some R3. Um, so the circle, uh, this is, we call it S1 tilde, the T-dualized circle of S1s, fibers over this um, uh, sphere, um, the large distance, distance on the R3, the S1 circle is fibers over that sphere with uh, degree k, um, and near the tip, um, um, you will have, for the, in, in, the, in the case when the NS5 rays are smeared, the average on a circle, uh, at the tip, you have a locally, um, the orbital singularity um, uh, C2 mod dk. Um, 